dear students welcome to this session in this session we are going to look into the rotating magnetic field so when we talked about the principle of operation we uh, talked about whenever a three phase winding is given with a three phase supply it creates and it produces an a rotating magnetic field so today we are going to understand how a rotating magnetic field is uh, created and we, we we are going to prove that if we give a three phase supply to the three phase winding it will produce a rotating magnetic field and before uh, we get into this uh, concept uh, we will just uh, revise the principle of operation okay what is the principle of operation uh, even before that i will show you the uh, rotor we talked about the construction rotor and the uh, stator uh, how they are constructed and then we talked about the principle of operation just i will quickly show you the the induction motor we have the a uh, stator okay this is the outer uh, stationary part of the induction machine that is a, a stator and this stator on inner periphery we have equal distance slots inside that slot we have a winding that is called as a stator winding and this is a, a three phase winding so ryb three phase winding and it is supplied with the, a three phase power and this is the rotor part in between we have a air gap so here you see a big air gap but air gap is very very small it will be uh, less than 1 mm so it will be in the terms of uh, point uh, uh, some uh, uh, 0.4 or 0.6 mm the, in that distance is very small and we have the uh, rotor and on uh, on the outer periphery of the rotor we have the rotor bars and they are either short circuited in case of a squirrel cage rotor or there will be a, a rheostat included uh, in the uh, uh, the rotor winding uh, forming the wound type of a, a rotor and we have already uh, seen uh, those construction now the principle of operation is what we talked when we give a three phase supply here uh, uh, a current will be produced in all the phases right uh, there will be current in the uh, r phase y phase and b phase ir iy and ib when the current starts flowing in the winding a flux is created so similarly we have a flux created by all this winding and that flux the magnetic uh, field that is created is a, a rotating one and it rotates with a, a speed that speed is a, is called as a, a synchronous speed and that particular magnetic field uh, uh, interlinks with the, the conductors of the rotor and the conductors of the rotor they experience the change in the magnetic flux they induce an emf and since they are in a closed circuit a current will start flowing in the rotor current uh, rotor conductors or the rotor bars when current uh, carrying conductor is placed in a magnetic field uh, a force is uh, experienced by those conductor so that force uh, is experienced by all the individual conductors and they are mounted on a shaft that individual force will get converted into torque the whole uh, the sum of all the torques the cumulative effect of all the uh, torques on the individual conductor of the rotor results in a, a motion so it will starts uh, rotating that is the principle of operation so the same figure i had here so this is the representation you can see the air gap here is the uh, whatever we talked earlier uh, this is the the stator part okay on the top you have a stator and in this this is the rotor part and we have the rotor conductors whenever uh, we give a three phase supply to the uh, three phase winding of the stator that is stator winding it creates a rotating magnetic field so you, you can see um, rotation of the uh, stator field so this magnetic field will be rotating and these conductors will cut this magnetic flux and that is how current is induced emf is induced since they are in a closed circuit current will be flowing through those conductors now the conductor current carrying conductors are placed in a magnetic field will experience a force 
and that force will make the rotor to move okay and which direction the uh, rotor will move it will move in the same direction where the stator field is moving that is explained through the lens law so today we will see uh, how the rotating magnetic field is created uh, this is the representation of a, a stator winding you can see here we have a r phase winding r r dash two ends of the r phase winding then we have the y phase winding y and y dash and we have the b phase winding so r y b and if you see uh, the r dash y dash and b dash they are connected together to make a, a star connection and we have r y and b so this is the a stator winding and to this winding we give a three phase supply and how do we represent these uh, uh, when we give the three phase supply uh, current current will start flowing in each of this winding uh, ir current ir will flow in the r phase winding current iy will flow in the y phase winding and current ib will flow in the b phase winding and these respective current they produce the fluxes ir will produce a flux phi r iy current will produce flux phi y and the ib current will produce the flux phi b so this is the representation so phi r phi y and phi b and if you see they are 120 degree apart why they are 120 degree apart the applied voltage r uh, uh, how we represent the suppose if er is the applied voltage er is equal to em sin omega t what would be ey ey is equal to em sin omega t minus 120 and eb is equal to em sin omega t minus 240 degree we have learned this in the three phase uh, circuits uh, the uh, the y phase will lag the r phase by 120 degree and b will lag the r phase by 240 degree and each of those are 120 degree apart similarly the current uh, produced in each of this winding ir iy ib they will also be 120 degree apart means the current uh, iy will lag the current ir by 120 degree and current in ib will lag the ir by 240 degree similarly the uh, flux produced in the each uh, winding that is phi r phi y phi b phi y will lag the phi r by 120 degree so you can see uh, this is the uh, phi r and phi y will lag by 120 degree and if you see phi b will lag by 240 degree and if i represent on the phasor diagram they are 120 degree apart so always uh, make sure that when you are drawing the the fluxes okay flux vectors in each of the phase phi r phi y and phi b start with the phi r this is the uh, reference and y b so it is in the uh, uh, order r y b so that is the the phase sequence now we will see uh, this is the resulting current when we apply the the three phase voltage to the three phase winding this is the current representation ir you can see it will start from the zero degree and this is the waveform for the ir and after 120 degree lag current in the y phase will start iy this is the iy and current in the b phase will start after 120 degree from the reference so this is after 240 degree from the reference so ib will start at 240 degree okay these are the resulting uh, ir iy ib currents the fluxes produced by ir iy ib will also have a, a similar pattern the phi r the flux uh, phi r will start immediately at zero and it will follow the same path when ir becomes maximum flux becomes maximum when current becomes uh, ir current becomes zero phi r becomes zero similarly the flux in the y phase it starts at 120 degree and it follows the way the uh, the current iy is alternating the flux phi y will alternate and same goes for the flux b and how do we represent them by mathematically the phi r flux phi r is equal to phi m sin omega t phi y is equal to phi m sin omega t minus 120 degree 
phi b is equal to phi m sin of omega t minus 240 degree. Now, what we will do is uh, these are the three different components of the flux and all together the vector sum of these fluxes at any given time is the resultant flux and we will try to find what is that resultant flux at each and every point of this timeline. So, we are going to take in the interval of 30 degrees. So, first we will uh, ta uh, take omega t is equal to 0 uh, and we will find out what is the total flux. The total flux or the resultant flux phi r would be a uh, vector sum of phi r plus phi y plus phi b. Similarly, we move to omega t omega t is equal to 30 degree, then omega t is equal to 60 degree and so on and we will find what would be the total or the resultant flux produced. Uh, just to uh, give a heads up, the resultant flux that is produced at every point omega t is equal to 0 or 30, 60, the magnitude will remains 1.5 times the phi m. Okay? Always it will be 1.5 times phi m and as the we move on this omega t, it, the, it, the vector resultant flux vector will also starts rotating at omega t is equal to 0, it will be in the reference when it uh, omega t becomes 30 degree, it will move by 30 degree, when omega t is equal to 60, it will move by 60 degree, when omega t is equal to 90 degree, the vector will move by 90 degree and so on that is the representation how the vector uh, phi r that is the resultant flux is rotating with a constant magnitude of 1.5 phi m. So, we will see it in the next slides. Initially, we will take omega t is equal to 0. What is omega t is equal to 0? At omega t is equal to 0, we are going to add i r plus i y plus i b. Okay. Okay. At omega t is equal to 0, what is phi r? Phi r is equal to 0. Why phi r is equal to 0? Phi r is equal to phi m into sin omega t. So, you can see we are going to replace omega t is equal to 0 here. So, this will become phi r is equal to phi m sin of 0 that is 0. Then we are going to replace phi y is equal to phi m of sin of 0 minus 120 that is uh, minus 120 sin of minus 120 and phi b is equal to phi m of sin of 0 minus 240. So, that is minus 240 degree and if we calculate those values when we substituted all those values phi r will become 0 because sin of 0 is sin of omega t is, is 0 it will become 0 phi y is equal to phi m of sin of minus 120 that is root 3 divided by 2 into phi m phi b is equal to phi m into sin of minus 240 that will be root 3 divided by 2 into phi m. Now, we will calculate first we will draw these phasors. this is the phi r phi r is equal to 0 and next we move to phi y what is the value of phi y? phi y is minus root 3 divided by 2. So, I missed minus okay, minus root 3 divided by 2. This is uh, phi y uh, and uh, the minus phi y if I take this sign on this side minus phi y is represented on the opposite side that is 180 degree on this side and we take a magnitude of root 3 divided by 2 into phi m. Now, uh, uh, we have this minus phi y and phi b is phi b is this one root 3 divided by 2 into phi m. Now, you can see phi r is 0, we need not worry about that. So, it is vector sum of phi b and minus phi y. When we add vector sum of phi b and minus phi y, this is the resultant phi r, phi r is the resultant, um, uh, resultant flux that phi r is given by uh, since both the vectors are equal magnitude we can use the formula 2 into magnitude of one side into cos of half the angle between them. So, 2 into one side is both side is root 3 by 2 into phi m root 3 by 2 into phi m and cos of half the angle what is the angle between them it is 60 degree cos of 60 divided by 2 this will become cos of 30. So, what will remain is uh, 2 and 2 will get cancelled root 3 and cos of 30 is root 3 by 2 and into phi m. So, this is not visible sorry 
this should be 5 m. So, root 3 into root 3 is 3, 3 divided by 2, 1.5 phi m. So, what is the resultant flux? 1.5 phi m. So, this is the direction of the phi r and what is the magnitude? 1.5 phi m. Now, we will move to omega t is equal to 30 degree and we will see what happens. When omega t is equal to 30 degree, phi r is equal to phi m sin of 30 degree. That is uh, sin of 30 is half phi m divided by 2 phi y is equal to phi m into sin of omega t minus 120 30 minus 120 is minus 90 and sin of minus 90 is minus 1 that is minus phi m and phi b is what phi m into sin of 30 minus 240 that is minus 210 that will come as half 1 by 2 phi m by 2 now we have three vectors so first vector phi r phi r is how much phi m by 2. So, phi r is phi m by 2 and phi y is minus phi m. So, minus I will take on this side minus phi y minus this is phi m and opposite side is minus phi y. So, minus phi y and length is phi m. So, you can see uh, this length would be double this length and third one is phi b is equal to phi m by 2. So, this phi b is equal to phi m by 2. Now, it is the vector sum of uh, phi r which is phi m by 2 and uh, phi b is equal to phi m by 2 and phi r dash is equal to uh, sorry uh, minus phi y. So, vector sum of phi r plus phi y plus phi b. How, how we are going to do is first we are going to take the vector sum of these two and what is the uh, vector sum of those two uh, that would be uh, calculated as phi r dash okay the, it is not given in the uh, diagram here uh, what we get is a, a phi r dash so uh, how to calculate that uh, same formula you can use uh, two times uh, magnitude of one side half of the angle between them so that would be two times into half okay into half plus uh, sorry uh, it would be 2 times phi m by 2 that is the magnitude of uh, one side and half of the angle so this angle is uh, uh, 120 degree and half of uh, 120 degree we get it as uh, uh, sin uh, cos of uh, 120 divided by 2 that is 60 half so that phi r dash will come as uh, 1 by 2 ok you can see this is the ok it is calculated here ok phi r is equal to 2 times phi m by 2 cos of 120 divided by 2 we get phi r as a phi m by 2 so this phi r is nothing but the vector sum of uh, r phase and the b phase now what would be the resultant uh, flux the resultant flux phi r is equal to phi r dash that is what we calculated uh, plus phi m both are in the same direction so that phi r is equal to 1.5 phi m so you can see that by adding all these three vectors we get the magnitude as 1.5 into phi m so magnitude remained the same in omega, when omega t is equal to 0 magnitude was 1.5 phi m but what has changed is the direction of the resultant vector. So, the resultant vector is now in this direction with the magnitude of 1.5 phi m and what is the angle 30 degree. So, when omega t is equal to 30 degree the resulting flux moved by 30 degree but its magnitude remained same. So, similarly if you take omega t is equal to 60 degree you calculate phi m is equal to sin of 60 and phi m uh, phi y is equal to phi m 60 minus 120 and phi b is equal to phi m into 60 minus 240 and if you do the same calculation draw the phasor diagram and add the uh, the three fluxes what you will get is the magnitude will remain 1.5 phi m but the resulting vector will move by another 60 degree so it will move by 60 degree and if you take omega t is equal to 90 degree the resulting vector will be like this 1.5 phi m uh, 1.5 phi m and angle would be 90 degree if you take omega t is equal to uh, 
120 degree so it will move like this magnitude will remain 1.5 phi m so that is how uh, similarly when you take angles as 60 90 120 degrees the resultant magnetic field vector moves to uh, 60 90 120 degrees and with uh, a constant magnitude of 1.5 phi m so thus uh, it proves that a three phase supply to a three phase winding produces a ro rotating magnetic field with a, a constant magnitude of 1.5 phi m and this is very very important uh, concept and uh, very important uh, question as well.